For this, I would like to invite our next resource person, Dr. Monica Nagpal, who is currently working in CIT NCRT as a senior academic consultant. So over to you, ma'am, for the next session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Priyakshi, for this session. Uh, I'll just start uh, my screen share. So, uh, uh, before we uh, get into the session, I would uh, like to know from uh, some of the participants that are you aware of this term OER or open licenses? You can write in the chat box or uh, I, I think you can write in the chat box, that will be good. If you are aware of this term OER or licenses, okay. Right. So I can see from the few responses which we have received that uh, some of you are aware, but many of you are still not aware of what OER is and what are the open licenses. So now moving ahead, I'll come to First, uh, come to few terms which we generally listen to and see when we are talking about e-content. That is, first of all, is the copyright. What is copyright? Can you write something about what copyright is? This is the next question. What is copyright? What do you understand by the term copyright, which we are going to discuss and understand in this session also? But if you have any awareness about what copyright is, then you can uh, share that. To use someone else's content, ownership protected by owner, yes. Ownership or protected by owner is the correct thing. To use someone else's content is the violation of copyright, right? Yes, copyright is the ownership of any created content. Right, very right. The next term is public domain and the third term is open educational resources, which we are going to now understand. So here we can see now on this slide what copyright is. Copyright basically are the rights which are, which lies with the creator or the author of their original work. Why? Just to protect their original work. That means it is not misused or somebody else is not taking benefit from it. Benefit of reading can be there, but still it has to be uh, fair use of that particular content. So you can simply uh, say this, that when we are a creator of a content, then we should be incentivized for our creativity. So copyright is the incentive for that particular creativity. And also, if you are properly registered under copyright, then uh, sometimes uh, we are also eligible for financial compensation for our uh, work, right? So our work, which is called as intellectual property right. Now here, if you just understand this term, intellectual property right, so there are different kinds of properties. You must be owning some land. You must be having one home. You must be owning a car. That's a physical property. Here we are talking about intellectual property. That means what we have created using our mind, my, our brain. So for that, we have IPR. And if our work is registered under IPR, then A, we will get the financial compensation for our work. B, nobody can use it without your due permission or making the... Uh, payment, which whatever way you have adopted for it. But we also need to understand here that after a certain period of time, uh, the work which is copyrighted gets free. That means it comes into public domain and the copyright expires. Say, for example, when we talk about songs or films, 
uh, approximately 20 to 25 years of time is there for the music song and after that the copyright expires and then there is no financial compensation for that how this financial compensation so in previous times we were <clears throat> We could see uh, we were uh, buying CDs and DVDs of music videos, cassettes. So every single payment of that, or uh, some part of it was going to the creator of the uh, resource, the content, the song, the music, whatever we have bought. So this way, the financial compensation was uh, is uh, given to the creator. Now the next term is public domain. I said that after maybe a few years, any intellectual property, any content which has been created enters into public domain. Now, what is this public domain? So if we understand, this is very simple. If we focus on the term itself, that's something which is in domain of public. That means it is owned by public. So materials or the content which are not protected by IPR, such as copyright, trademark, or different patent laws are available, they are under public domain. And no, uh, not any individual own these works. They are owned by the public. As I mentioned that this is in domain of public. What are the works which lands into public domain? As I mentioned, that any content for which the copyright has expired or the copyright owner knowingly make it the releases the content under public domain he keeps the content under public domain then it is also public domain when we are using works from public domain what we should follow like in case of copyright we need to pay say for example we want to read a book we will go pay and then read it right but in case of public domain anything is available for free you can go internet go on internet and download it and use it right but here when we are in public domain you can simply go and utilize it but there is uh, but there is one uh, wise thing which as a teacher we can do is that we can give citation to that particular content citation means we are giving simple credit that okay this is a music piece which i have taken for my e content and this has been created by so and so or i have taken it from so and so place if some of you are an, an into research then you must be knowing that we write references at the end so that references means that from where we have got the inspiration of writing from where we have taken data or any other information which is a part of our text or the content which we have created so this way we are giving citation that means we are giving credit to that person in public domain it is not mandatory but if we practice this then we will be able to save ourselves from different problems which are uh, which can be created for as a copyright law because if it is a practice then if something is not in public domain also and we are using it for educational purpose giving it proper credit then we can save ourselves now next is how to save ourselves how to get into public domain and the third term which i wrote what is open educational resources so to understand open educational resources we will understand first are we aware of the term educational resources yes any educational resource that means any resource which is being used for educational purposes is an educational resource it can be an image it can be a video it can be an audio program it can be infographic graphic animation simulation games anything all the type of resources we have discussed can be used as educational resources now what is then open into it we are talking about free that we can access it we don't have to pay for it then what is this term open now we will understand all those things and how to make any particular content free and open source we will understand that also so uh, when we talked about copyright that is one mechanism or when we talked about ipr or other patent policies they are one type of uh, protection to our content where we are not giving any liberty to the user 
we are keeping all the rights with us as an author. But on the same page, we have a different authority. We have not authority, but we have a different mechanism that is called creative commons. It is an alternative approach for giving license to your own educational resources. Now, what is this alternative licensing approach? We have used copyright, that is one particular type of license or law. Here we are using creative commons. Now, creative commons basically, what it gives us, it gives us a friendly license. Friendly to whom? Friendly to creator as well as friendly to user. For what purpose? For accessing and using digital contents. Or from the per, uh, perspective of creator, for, for sharing and spreading it further. Uh, for spreading the digital contents further with the teaching and learning fraternity. So Creative Commons provides us that particular new approach. It was started by Lawrence Lessig. And you can access more about Creative Commons uh, licenses at creativecommons.org. Now, what Creative Commons is? Creative Commons basically comes up with four rights. It gives you four rights. And mixing of these four rights, you can create different licenses. So they have created six licenses for us, which we can use, imply for our work also. The first one, first right out of the four rights which Creative Commons gives is attribution. Now here you can see on your screen, attribution is written and the symbol is given here for your reference. In the circle, a person, a human uh, figure is uh, depicted and written by. So by means, simply we say this is created by whom? That is this by. So we are giving credit to that person who have created this particular content or uh, this particular resource or this particular video or audio. So wherever in the content it is written CC by, that means it says that you have to give attribution. You have to give credit to the creator. The second term which you see is it is written share alike share alike and you can see the symbol reverse c with an arrow and the the short form is sa in the license it will be written as sa so it means that if you are using somebody else's content you found a very good video on google you want to use it and it is written sa and but this video is in english and you want to translate it in your regional language and you want to dub it or you want to maybe give subtitles to it. If it is written CC by SA or something SA is given, that means it is asking you, you can make changes, but you have to share the new resource under same license, SA license. The license should carry that same terms. So this is understanding of the word SA. This is a one right. The next is non-commercial, a dollar sign crossed. That means if you are using somebody else's resource and NC is written or dollar sign crossed symbol is there, then you cannot use that resource for commercial purposes. It is simply saying no commercial use, please. Then there is equals to sign written with non-derivative ND. ND means you cannot make changes. You cannot derive it further. So. If this symbol is there in any of the contents you find, it is simply saying, please do not make changes to this video or audio. You can use it, you can spread it further, but you cannot make changes to it. So for example, if a video you found it in English, you cannot translate it in English. Uh, can somebody mute the participants? Okay. So now these were the four rights and based on these rights, Creative Commons have created six licenses. Now we will see what are those six licenses. Here you can see uh, the licenses. I told you CC means Creative Commons. These are the licenses by Creative Commons. Now you can see all these things and you can find out that only four things are given, which we have discussed. First is by Right, so we are, I'm repeating again and again, don't worry. 
So here by means attribution that I'm going to give credit. Here it is written also. If it is CC by, that means it is a Creative Commons content and it is launched under by. That means you only have to give credit. You only have to give credit that you, you are using this resource which is created by whom. That's it. Rest, you can use it, you can reuse it, you can edit it, you can sell it, you can make profit out of it, everything you can do. So here we will see it in detail. Now you can see here, every license is uh, placed here in front of you to understand it in detail. CC by, freely use, that means use, you can use it, copy it, adapt it. Copy means you can make copies of it, you can make changes to it, adapt it and distribute to anyone. You can further share it also. The copyright, only thing is that the copyright owner is attributed. The copyright owner or the license owner or the creator should be given due credit of his creation. That is it. The next one is here, one more term is coming, ND. This is CC, we know, buy now, we know, ND. So it says freely use, you can use it. You can copy it. You can distribute it to anyone, but only in original form. Because here ND is given. ND means you cannot make changes to it, right? So the copyright owner must be given attribution because buy is there. Wherever the buy is applied, that means you have to give credit to the owner. This is one important thing to understand. ND means non-derivative. So any resource which is under ND, that means you can use it, you can copy it, you can reuse it, you can share it further. You can make even profit out of it, but you cannot make changes to it. Now uh, we have to understand the examples for it also. Any content, say for example, a textbook which is written by some author, he might not want to make changes to it because it is his original work. So in that case, this license can be applied. The next is attribution, buy and share alike. That means it is a Creative Commons license with the attribution, you have to give attribution and share alike. Share alike means that you can edit it because also ND is not placed here. Wherever ND is placed, you cannot make changes. But here ND is not placed, SA is placed. That means you can make changes to it and you have, you can further share it. Now we'll understand it here. You can use it freely. You can copy it, adapt it. Adapt means you can make changes and distribute. You can distribute also, provided the new work is licensed under the same terms as the original work. So here, if for example, you found a video, you have translated it in your language, you have dubbed it in your language, or you have given subtitles it in your language, then you have to reshare that under same license. Now, why and what is the benefit? The benefit is that one person have created a resource under OER, somebody else is making use of it and making a new resource. The actual author wants that whatever content is created is created for educational purpose. So it should be shared further. So in this case, if you are making any changes, the author wants you to please reshare it so that it might reach to more people or more people can get benefited out of this particular resource, right? And also here, no NC is there. That means you can also use it for non-commercial purposes. So the only credit, only criteria is that you have to give credit and you have to share under same license. That is it. Now we reach to the next. Here you see a new symbol, NC. That is non-commercial. CC we are aware, BY we are aware, NC means non-commercial. So now we'll see how it applies. Freely use it, copy it, adapt it. Adapt means make changes and distribute but for non-commercial purposes. You cannot make profit out of it. That is the only condition here. 
and copywriter must be copyright owner must be given due credit for his creation next is cc by nc nd now you can see the license is increasing by we are aware cc we are aware nc also we are aware that means we cannot make profit out of it nd means we cannot make changes to it so now if you understand it this is the most restricted license of creative commons if you are releasing any e content your e content under this license this is the most restricted now what how it is most restricted you can once you have shared anybody can use it copy it distribute it to anyone but only in original form that means you cannot make changes to it and also you cannot use for commercial purposes so here these two things only are restricted and your people or teachers or learners are able to access your resource but this is termed as the most restrictive license because here you cannot make changes and you cannot also no earn profit so this is the most restricted license of creative commons the next is cc by ncsa now here by is there we are aware of that sa mean uh, non commercial means we cannot make profit sa means Here ND is not there, so it means that you can make changes to it, but you have to share it under same license. So we can read it now: freely use, copy, adapt, make changes, and distribute, but for non-commercial purposes, right? And also, the new work is licensed under the same term as the original work. Same license is to be used, and at the end. everywhere it is written the copyright owner must be attributed because we can see by 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 everywhere so these are the six licenses which we have created from the four rights which uh, creative commons have given us so now as i said this is the most restricted and this is the most free license we will see it now how here you can see we have written pd that means public domain this is c crossed public domain again this is cc by that means only attribution is required you can do anything with that resource but only you have to give credit the next is cc by sa that means here you can do anything only restriction is that you have to give credit and the new resource has to be shared under same license that means this is not a restriction at all then cc by nd here this means the restriction has actually started that you cannot make change uh, you cannot make this is nc you cannot make profit out of it otherwise in the previous two you can make profit also here comes cc by nc sa that means you cannot make profit out of it but you can edit it you can make changes to it and you have to reshare under the same license and the next one is cc by nd from here the restriction is starting that you cannot make changes here the last one which is the most restricted license is cc by nc nd which i explained where you have to give credit to the author you cannot make profit and you cannot make any changes to the work which is already done this is one license which is applied where if you want to see now you must you have heard in the morning about diksha you have seen different other initiatives also so all the e contents digital content like audio video are which are released here at cit they are released under cc by nc sa that means you cannot make profit out of it but you can use it you can reuse it you can share it you can edit it you can do anything with it but the textbook of ncert all of you must be aware that ncert is also producing textbooks so the textbooks are released under cc by nc nd because not everybody is allowed to make changes to the 
textbook. That is the reason it is most restricted. But in using it or sharing it, there is no <laughs> restriction as such for the digital textbooks are, uh, as far as digital textbooks are concerned. Now, the last one which is appearing here is that is all right reserved. That means copyrighted. Correct C means copyright. Double C means creative common. And here a um, question might arise. CC zero public domain. That means this is also creative commons public domain. Here in CC by it was also almost public domain, but you had to give credit. When now you are talking about public domain, you don't need to give credit also. But as a teacher, as I mentioned earlier, please always give due credit so that whenever a product shifts to also somebody author also changes the license, then also you don't face any difficulty later on. So it is always better to cite, make citations in your content so that you are safe from every end. Now here, I am simply showing you how the Creative Commons licenses, whatever we have discussed, how they are applicable. Now you can see CC BY. You can see what all you can do with this. Copy and publish, attribution required, commercial use, modify and adopt, change license. So here you can see in all the CC licenses, you can copy and publish. Also attribution, you have to give in all. The next is commercial. You can use any content which is under these three licenses for commercial purposes. That means CC by, CC by SA, CC by ND. You can use it for commercial purposes. The rest three, CC by NC, that means non-commercial, CC by NCSA, that means non-commercial share alike. CC by NCND, that means non-commercial, non-changes. These three, you cannot make commercial use. Now come here, modify and adopt. You can, in four licenses, you can modify and adapt. That means you can make changes to it. CC by, CC by SA, CC by NC, CC by NCSA. Wherever ND is written, or equals to sign is there, there you cannot make changes. Now change license. You can change license in almost every situation. Only when essay is written, you have to share it alike in the same license because the author wants the content to be spread further. So these are the basic uh, six licenses which are available to us, which as an educationist, we can use them and get benefited from them. Also, when we are going to see Google or when we are going to search for uh, resources, then we can follow these principles of copyright and search for open educational resources rather than the copyright resources, right? Now, when we are going to use some content which is uh, under OER also, we have to give attribute. We have seen here that in every content, we have to give attribute. Attribution is required in all the licenses. In that case, how to give attribute can be a question. So here, the title of the content, author's detail who have created the content, source link from where you are downloading the content and the license which the author has provided to the content, you have to write all these things and then you are going to give attribution to that particular author of that content. Now, as a teacher, how ethically we can use the information? The first one which I mentioned, even if any content is under public domain, you can use it ethically by giving proper citation. This will also help you to avoid plagiarism. The second is, don't use copyrighted material. Third is use material which are in public domain or which are under creative common licenses with different licenses. You can use according to that. And you should use information or data which is not copyrighted. Apart from that, there is one more category which says you can use some of the copyrighted data but in limit and with proper citation. You can use it for educational purposes or newspaper or report writing, not for other purposes. 
so this is a uh, this is termed under fair use of the content now i have mentioned so much to you about creative commons open educational resources now any educational resources which is released with creative commons license is called open educational resources now if you try to understand the term open here so it will depend on what license we have given if we are allowing the person to make changes to our content or even to make profit out of it that means we are giving them right to do anything with our content but only is credit give credit to us that is the use of openness openness means i'm saying it again openness means that we are allowed to make changes to the content we are allowed to modify the content in our language or with certain visuals which we want to add that is called the openness because we term, generally confuse this term with free free means which is available for free of cost but you may not be allowed to edit it so mind it free and open are two different terms free only talks in terms of money open talks about making changes to it say for example when even softwares we will be discussing many software in these sessions open source software that means they are open for us to edit so what will you edit in the software the source code the back end information of the software is given if you have the knowledge you can even modify the software that is the openness that is open educational resource so any video given to you you can make changes into the video is the openness whether it is free or not is something very different any open content can be paid also but it is once you paid everything you can do with it but say for example windows windows is a paid and copyrighted operating system you buy it once and use it for lifetime but the back end information of windows is not available with us how our data is being used where it is uh, how much information is being collected from us we cannot modify anything in the window functioning that is copyright so it is paid plus copyrighted on the other hand there is open source uh, soft, uh, operating system that is ubuntu that is a freely available to download on internet but if you go and buy the cd that is also that is just the payment of the cd not the software so once you run that cd in your computer you install it you can actually change the ubuntu software also with its source code that is the openness so we have to understand this term and then use it when we are going to create our content now we have talked so much about creative commons but we don't know how to search for such a content which is open educational resource so there are different uh, platforms available also on google youtube you can search for creative commons content or open educational resources so the first one is when you go at google go for advanced search and apply the license or when you go to youtube you type your keywords and then apply the filter of creative commons you will be able to access then there is creative commons search itself you can find all the free or open source content here jorum is also one of the repository where a variety of subject content is available expert connecting repository base unsplash pixabay pixabay is for images like the way we search google images you can get on pixabay various images for your uh, e content development now how the advanced tool works you can see once you go to google advanced search here in the below part you can get the changes that you want to apply and then you can look for oer content on the google itself these are some of the uh, repositories and websites where open educational resources are available here this is the list of all the where you can get open content like open textbook open course material open images open audio and video different platforms and apps open slides 
there are different platforms that where you can access a lot of open educational resources which you can use further you can modify them depending on their license this is also uh, for research papers this is also one of the repository and this is uh, again commonwealth of learning is an organization there we also find a lot of open educational resources and then for courses which are under open source these are the platforms for those courses multimedia resources we are very much fond of uh, multimedia resources so these are the tools which you can use for creating or accessing multimedia resources for different subjects for uh, different uses and for creating and accessing these multimedia resources these are for books then these are large repositories where a lot of content is available which you can find out which is more useful to you and this is my references and citation because we all know that we have to give a uh, citation or uh, we have to give the due credit to the creator so with this i come back to you with uh, screen without the screen share and i wish to tell you more about open educational resources i am going to share a link on whatsapp group please listen to me carefully i am going to share a link on whatsapp group there you can do one two to three hour online course on open educational resources we have learned a lot about it but you can get into more examples and more theoretical understanding of open educational resources on that course it is a small course of 2 hours you have to go you have to register yourself log in and complete the course and earn a certificate this certificate can also help you at your later developments you can uh, attach it to your cv also and also we will later uh, part of this srg on the fourth day that is friday Uh, that is thursday we are going to share a google form in which you have to submit assignments based on these training so please attend to all the sessions carefully and submit based assignment based on that so this for this session you have to complete that oer course earn the certificate and attach that particular certificate as an assignment for this uh, particular session if you face any difficulties you don't have to submit it today itself just carefully register and complete your course and once i share the google form then you can uh, attach that certificate in that google form as an assignment the rest assignment will be based on what you will be learning from tomorrow different tools based on the tools you will create some e content you will have to submit that e content as a assignment don't worry about the quality but it is basically uh we would be aware that you have used that particular software or application you have tried to create some content out of it there is no uh, your knowledge check there no fluency check of the software but a general understanding that yes you have at least tried during these training program so please i will be pasting that link in the whatsapp group today only so that you can start doing that course and you can finish it by the end of this week with these words i would like to say uh, thanks to all of you and if you have any question you can raise your hands or you can ask directly over to all the participants thank you so much for your any questions If you have any questions please ask Either I have demons uh, explained it really well or you have not understood at all Uh, dear participants if you don't have any questions you can also share your thoughts or your takeaways from the engaging session that dr monica just presented you can also share your uh, feedback and comments on the session sir you have to complete the course and submit the certificate as an assignment you don't have to create content out of it content we will be creating from tomorrow in different sessions
We are getting a couple of feedback, but the session was very clear and interesting. And it's good to learn new topics. Okay, if so, there are no questions, I hand over to you, Ms. Piyakshi, for the further deliberation. So uh, I can see that there are no more questions. And uh, I would like to thank Monica, ma'am, for such an informative session on OER and licensing. And uh, for uh, the next session, uh, we are going to have 